Okay, we're going in the blue probability slice. Let's work with conditional probability, basic. It is estimated that 25% of all California adults are college graduates. 30% of California adults are regular internet users. It is also estimated that 19% of California adults are both college graduates and internet users. So right away, we've had some experience with similar word problems. As we look at this right away, we can sort of see this as an A kind of a thing. We'll call this one a, the probability of A. Uh, this one here looks like B. And then this one, notice that this is both college graduates and internet users. And so this is A and B. Now sometimes they'll mix these up. Don't always assume that the first one's A, the second one's B, and the third one's A and B. Sometimes they will scramble these. So you still have to be careful to read the words. And now we get into the questions. What is the probability that a California adult is an internet user given that, and we'll find that that's key text there, given that he or she is a college graduate? And then in Part B, among California adults, what is the probability the randomly chosen internet user is a college graduate? And so then they will ask us to take those calculations around to two decimal places. This one here has caused students in the past a good deal of stress. And it's all about reading uh, the tricky way that they word these problems. So let's go over here and take a look at my notes on this. Conditional probability basic. And then we have our formula. But oftentimes when I show students this formula, they say, well, that isn't very helpful because this formula here takes a lot more interpretation than the average. So we look over here, and this is the symbol for conditional probability. Uh, we would read this, the probability of A, and then we have this vertical slash line. Now, that one little symbol, one little pin stroke, one little slash contains a lot of meaning. So we can interpret that little slash mark with the words given that. We can use that from a randomly selected or we can use that slash to mean a previously existing condition. So it can mean all of those things. In any event, notice that the answer is always going to be a fraction, like probability always is. But the top of that fraction is always the A and B. So whenever we're faced with one of these problems, what I tell students to do immediately is to set up the fractions. And on the top of the fractions, we will put the probability of A and B. So let's go back and look at our problem. And we'll start setting this up. Now, right away, notice here, it is estimated that 19% of California adults are both college graduates and regular internet users. So there is our and condition. And in both of these conditional probabilities, we're going to have to calculate uh, the A and B. So we might as well go right over here and start setting up our problem. In fact, let's set up both parts of the problem at exactly the same time. What we're going to do then is to notice that every one of these has two parts parts, an A part and a B part. And what we're going to do then is to set up the top of both fractions. And that's where the A and B condition is going to go. And once again, we said that that was going to be 19%. So we're simply going to set up both problems. In fact, we'll just solve both parts of it exactly at the same time by coding the tops of both of those 0.19. Now, what we do after this is tricky, Okay, a little bit critical. So let's go over here now and read the story much more closely. Now, in the first part, it says, what is the probability that a California adult is an internet user given that? Now, this is key text. This tells us right away that given that is that we are looking here at this part that we're interested in right here, because that's what follows the slash given that, given that B. So in this case, what 
whatever that condition is that's given is immediately going to be the amount of probability that goes on the bottom of our fraction. So let's go back and read for that now. It says here in part A, given that he or she is a college graduate. So go up here now and look for the college graduates. There they are, college graduates. 25% of the California adults are college graduates. That tells us exactly what we want to do. What we want to do on part A is put point 25 right here. Okay. Now, let's go to the other part. Let's go to the other part here and see what we have on part B among California adults. What is the probability that a randomly chosen internet user, randomly chosen internet user, once again, look back at my notes here. In all my notes here, I have got uh, randomly selected. Randomly selected is another way of interpreting this vertical slash line here. So whatever uh, follows that, whatever is randomly selected is our B condition, which is going to go on the bottom of our fraction. So we'll go over here quickly, take a look back at this. Notice here a randomly chosen internet user. So our internet users then are, our, are going to be our condition. That's going to be the things uh, that are going to go on the bottom of the fraction. So we look up here and we notice that 30% of California adults are internet users. That tells us what to do, that that 0 .30 is going to go right there. Okay, now I'll tell you one little secret here that I have found out with doing this problem dozens and dozens of times. Alex has kind of messed up here. What they have done is they've made this problem very predictable because on the tops of these, we're always going to have the A and B, but once you decide one of these, the other one is simply going to be the third number that's in the problem. They never ever make these two the same, and so if you can get one of them right, you should get both of them right. One thing that's students have done on assessments is to get them mixed up though, get both answers right, but get them mixed up, and of course then it counts it wrong, so you got to be careful with that. Let's go ahead then and uh, do the math on this. Once again, here's another good job for our TI-30 XS calculator. What we're simply going to do here is to take your 0.19 and you're going to divide that by your 0.25. That's going to give us an answer of 0.76. And uh, let's go to the other one while we're at it. We're going to have 0.19. We're going to divide that by 0 0.30. That's going to give us 0 0.6333333, repeating forever. Uh, let's see what they want by way of rounding here. They want these to two decimal places. Well, the first one's easy because it came out even at the second decimal place. The other one here is 633333, repeating, or 0 0.60. Three. So let's check that and see what we've got. And Alex is happy. Practice this well, particularly the wording. Watch out for those key phrases given that, randomly selected. Or if they don't say any of those words, then you kind of have to read between the lines and look for the inference that is, it is a previously existing condition.